the power to be free. Your awareness is your compass. It's your happiness insurance. It's your life insurance. No matter what's happening, you always know that you are safe. Because the moment you observe your mind, you are free from the situation that's happening outside. You are even free from what is happening inside of you. The moment you observe what your mind is doing, what you are feeling. What you are thinking, that moment you can be free, free from yourself, free from your thoughts, free from your feeling. It is the insurance that you can always come back to, your compass of now. Be in the present moment, knowing how you feel. Come back to your compass. Observe your mind. There is the secret to happiness. We can't always choose what happens around us, but we can always choose how we feel. And when we feel good, the whole world around us is better as well. When we change, the whole world changes. Your thoughts can also be like a knife piercing you. Notice how your mind reaches out and pick up a thought, like picking up a knife. Of the things that people did to you or said to you long time ago, those situations ended long time ago. But we ourselves, we keep picking up those thoughts. We keep picking up their words, what they did, and bring it to stab to our mind again and again. The moment you realize that you are actually stabbing yourself, you can put your knife down. You can put your thoughts down. When people intend to hurt you, do not help them to succeed. No one can actually harm you except yourself. They can only create situations, but you're suffering your pain. You do it yourself by picking up those thoughts, picking up the situation, picking up their words and what they did to you, and then bring it to stab you. Watch it. Observe when your mind pick up the thoughts. And put your knife down. Observe your mind, and you're free. Stop stabbing yourself. Do not let anyone succeed in making you unhappy. When they want to hurt you, want you to be unhappy, they can't until you let them by picking up their words and their actions to play it in your mind. So put your thoughts down. Do not allow anyone to come into your family, to come into your life through your thoughts. The moment you think of them, you allow them to hurt your loved one and hurt yourself. Do not allow anybody to succeed in hurting you. Put your knife down. If you want to get back at someone, begin by getting your life back. Forgiveness is not for them; it's for you. Begin by forgiving to set yourself free. Pain is pain separated from you. The moment you see it, whenever something happened to you, happened in your life. You can actually just see, observe that, and you can take care of things, solve your problem, solve the challenges that are facing you, without burdening your mind with your anger, with your sadness. You can, your mind can be calm and peaceful while you're taking care of those challenges. 
see your pain, see the suffering that occurs, and you're separated from them. You will be like a runner who doesn't carry heavy things, so you're free to take care of everything easily. There is one most important thing that as a human, we should be able to acknowledge that. That is when your mind reach out and take on some thoughts. That is like, um, have you ever felt sad or have you ever felt something burning in your mind? That moment that you are worrying or thinking of those things, you are like you're holding thorns in your fist and you feel that you're unhappy and you can't let go of those things. The moment you are aware of that your fist, your palm is holding those thorns, it let go immediately. And that moment of your mind letting go, happiness is there in front of you. Happiness is always here and now. The moment you come back to realize what you're doing, let go of your thorn. There is a story of the monkey and trim pins. When people want to bully the monkey that steal their food, they just spread the shrimp paste all over the monkey's hand. When the monkey smells the shrimp paste, they just rub their hand against the wall and everything until their hand bleeds. What hurts the monkey is not the shrimp paste, it is the hatred in the monkey's mind. It's just like us humans. When we hate something, we keep sniffing it. The more we hate it, the more we bring it into our mind. And that is really what hurting us. Our agitation towards something, our hatred towards something, that brings the suffering into our mind. Stop it now. When farmers want to catch monkey, they will bring a coconut, cut a small hole on top of the coconut, small enough for the monkey to put its hand in, and then put some peanuts inside the coconut. Once the monkey smell of the peanuts, they will run so quickly and then put its hands in the coconut, grab the peanuts. Once it grabs the peanuts, it cannot take out its hand and stuck there until the farmer come and take them away. We may laugh at the monkey that if it wants to be free, all it has to do is just release the peanuts. But how many times in our life that we trap ourselves in a problem because we do not let go of our want. We do not let go of our desire. Our desire is the only thing that can trap us in the problem. Whenever you feel trapped, Ask yourself, what desire am I holding on to? What is trapping me inside this problem? Every problem has solution. It's up to you whether you are ready to choose it. There is a story of a novice and his robe. One day, a novice went to meditate in the forest near a village and then a mouse came to bite his rope. So the next morning he went into a village to ask for a cat. The cat took care of the mouse chasing it away but then the cat needed to be fed. So the next morning he went into the village again and asked for the cow to get the milk for the cat. Everything is taken care of. He was sitting down waiting to meditate again but the cow needed to be fed as well. So the next morning, he went into the village, hiring a woman to take care of the cow. Well, in the end, he ran out of money to pay for the woman, so he ended up marrying that woman, stopped his purpose of meditation, so much for taking care of his rope. But we may laugh at his story, but how many times in our life that we solve one problem by creating another problem. Some of us may feel lonely and we solve that loneliness by having a partner get married. 
But whenever we feel lonely or we are empty inside, we always attract another emptier heart. Whatever we do, in order to solve the void in our heart, it can never be solved because our state of mind will attract the same state of mind, the same state of condition into our life. So we must begin by solving the problem at its root. If we feel lonely and we feel the emptiness in our heart, we can just look at it, observe it. The moment we see it, that void, that emptiness subside. And when we are full, content, composed and serene, we use that heart of composed, content and serene to find our partner. Then we will draw, attract a very full, content and serene partner as well. So we begin by watching ourselves, see how we want, we yearning for something. Once we see it, that yearning disappear and we become composed again. And then we use that composed mind to seek for the things that we need in our life for a sustainable, long-lasting happiness and stability in life. What hurt us most is our desire. Our desire of wanting something more. Our desire of wanting something to go away. Do not let our desire, do not let your desire hurt you. Have you ever been asked about the glass with half water, whether this glass is half full or half empty? But notice how that question is. It shows that there is something missing. What about looking at it again? Maybe you can see that maybe the glass is too big. What if you resize the glass to the amount of water you have? Then you will always have the glass full. The glass is like our desire for things. The water is the thing we have in life. Whenever we acknowledge our desire, we immediately become content. We have enough. We are full. We have enough of everything we need. That moment of awareness of our desire and our suffering. If you do not watch your desire, it can lead your life to do so many things. But the moment you realize your desire, you can be happy right here and right now with what you have. And when you are happy right here and right now, you can use that happy mind, that content mind, to get anything in life. And that means you are happy now, the starting point. You are happy while you are doing it. You are happy when you get it as well. If you can't be happy with $100, you won't be happy with $100 million. You won't have the ability to know how to be happy with that. So start, begin by the, the small happiness that you have today. Be content. Train yourself capability of happiness today, right here and right now. I also found that in some situations, we all need to empower ourselves need to get over someone, something, or some situations. The other part of my teaching focuses on freeing people from their past, their childhood wounds, their memories. When people are free of their past, they love deeply, live happily, have faith and respect in themselves, and that truly bring all the great things into their lives. <laughs>